As many of you know, a census count was taken this year in 2020. New York City now boasts a population of 8.4 million people. What's worse, or better, depending on how you look at it, is that planners project a population of 9.4 million people by 2025. This means there will be a million more people living in New York City in less than five years. While this may be great news for landlords, this population boost will put more strain on a city's infrastructure. Each and every one of these individuals have an energy need. How does New York City meet all of this demand? Even during the summer months when air conditioners are blasting, power is fed throughout the city without hiccup. Electricity is so reliably supplied in New York that most people take it for granted. Well, if you're a little more curious as to how power is fed throughout the city, stick around, for in this episode of Secret Marvels, we will cover New York City's energy grid. New York City is not just densely populated. It is also a very industrial city. It is no surprise, therefore, that the city consumes an enormous amount of energy. In fact, New York City makes up one-third of the state's entire energy load. But where does all this power come from? The city produces energy from a variety of sources. Here is New York City's energy profile. 38% of its energy is produced from natural gas. 37% is from nuclear power. I don't know about you, but I found this number to be quite surprising. 19% is from hydroelectric power. 3% is from wind. 2% is from coal. And 1% consists of other sources such as solar and biomass. In total, New York City uses an average of 53,000 gigawatt hours per year, which is basically 53 quadrillion watts, a horrendously large number. To give you a relative comparison, the state of New York consumes an average of 160,000 gigawatt hours per year. While New York City is only half a percent the size of the state, it consumes one-third of the entire energy produced there. The Big Apple is indeed the city of light, but like all big juggernauts, this energy giant has a humble beginning. It all started with Thomas Edison. The success of his incandescent light bulbs created a demand for a source of power. Edison figured he would have to construct a central power station to provide his initial customers electricity for the light bulbs they had purchased. This led to the construction of the Pearl Street Power Station. During development, Edison realized that a power station would not be the only requirement. He discovered that the great challenge was building the elaborate network of wires and underground conduits needed to deliver energy to customers. After much political strife and many initial rejections, Edison convinced the mayor of New York City to allow developers to dig up the streets of Lower Manhattan and install 100,000 feet of wiring. Another obstacle Thomas Edison faced was devising a way of tracking energy consumption so that customers could be charged for the exact amount of power they used. The instrument we call a meter did not exist in the late 1800s. Edison and his team built and designed the first meter in the spring of 1882. The Pearl Street Station began delivering electric power to its customers on September 4, 1882. The first electric bill ever was sent to Ansonia Brass and Copper Company on January 18, 1883. It was for $50.44, the equivalent of $2,500 today. Edison may or may not have known this, but this was the start of the modern electric utility industry, a huge historical milestone in terms of business and engineering. The New York Times, one of Edison's initial customers for electricity, did not realize the world-changing significance of this central power station, and reported about the Pearl Street Station under miscellaneous city news. Although cutting-edge for its day, the Pearl Street Station could only power a tiny portion of Manhattan, one square mile to be correct. The area in red indicates the first electrical grid in the entire world. If that doesn't make you proud to be a New Yorker, then I don't know what will. New York City is full of secrets, and one of these secrets in plain sight is a plaque located at the location where the Pearl Street Power Station used to be. If you want to visit this location, be sure to save it as one of the places to visit on a Cityscape app. The Pearl Street Station reliably delivered power from 1882 to January 1890, with only one interruption that lasted for three hours. A major fire in 1890 caused extensive damage to the station. Of the nine dynamos inside the station that generated electricity, 
only one would survive the 1890 fire. Although the Pearl Street station burned after barely eight years of operation, it created a demand for energy over greater distances, which Edison's DC system was ill-suited for. Nikola Tesla's AC was much better at transmitting energy over long distances, and after a bitter struggle in what would be known as the War of the Currents, Edison lost to Tesla's AC system, and that is what powers our city today. I've mentioned that there is one last dynamo left out of the original nine ones that were in the Pearl Street power station. But where is it? This historical gem is not located in New York City, but is at the Henry Ford Museum in Detroit, Michigan. The Henry Ford Museum, by the way, is truly a historical marvel and is a secret spot definitely worthy of visit. If you want to see the last Edison dynamo and plenty of other historical stuff, be sure to save this location on a Cityscape app. The generation of power is only half the equation, however. The other half is delivering that energy to customers. To manage the transmission of electricity generated from distant places like the Robert Moses Power Plant in the Niagara Falls, New York uses a grid system to control the flow of power throughout its regions. So what is a grid? The grid is a system used to manage the transmission of energy throughout New York. The state is divided into load zones, which represent areas of different energy demand. Running across these load zones is 11,000 circuit miles of transmission lines. Each load zone has lines of different transmission capacity. As a rule, upstate New York generates an excess of energy compared to its load, while downstate is in a deficit. The entity responsible for operating the state's grid is called NISO, which stands for New York Independent System Operator. As already stated, each zone in a grid has a different energy demand and transmission capacity. When the energy demand in a load zone begins to exceed the capacity of its transmission line, congestion occurs. To relieve this congestion, more expensive power units located in the city are dispatched to meet the spike in demand. This dispatch of local but more expensive units make the customer's energy costs more expensive during congestion periods. However, it prevents the transmission lines that are bringing energy from distant places from exceeding their limits. The top two congested points on the New York electric grid are in Central East and the interface between Upstate and Southeast New York. You can think of these points as bottlenecks on a grid. These congestion points exist because two-thirds of the electricity demand is located downstate, but only one-third of the energy is generated in that region. This chart, for an example, shows that New York City's load far exceeds its generation capacity. What's worse, this energy discrepancy is bound to become bigger due to Governor Cuomo's successful push to close the Indian Point power plant. For those of you who don't know, Indian Point is a nuclear power plant located just 30 miles away from New York City. With the recent nuclear disaster of Fukushima, Governor Cuomo saw this reactor as a threat to New York City and its massive population. After extensive negotiations, a deal to close the Indian Point power plant has been achieved. As already mentioned, however, this plant provides New York City with as much as 30% of its energy. The closing of this plant will widen the energy gap and cause further congestions on a grid. Governor Cuomo is well aware of this, but he felt that the lethal and environmental reasons justifies that cost. Public response to the closure of Indian Point has been mixed, with some feeling Cuomo did the right thing, while others, not so much. What do you think? If you're a New Yorker watching this, please leave your thoughts in the comment section. Despite the energy deficit, there are bright things to come. New York City's future looks a lot greener, both figuratively and literally. The city plans on investing $1.2 billion to modernize the grid and increase the transmission capabilities from upstate to downstate New York. This will bring more cleaner, renewable energy produced from upstate to New York City without experiencing congestion. This plan is part of Governor Cuomo's energy highway. There are also green energy power sources being formed right near the city such as the large solar farm currently being built in Long Island, and the Empire slash Sunrise Wind Project that will take place right in Sunset Park, Brooklyn. 
This transition to clean energy will not go without its challenges, however. Electric cars are becoming increasingly popular amongst the public, and electric buses are being piloted by the MTA right now in preparation for large-scale deployment. New York City's demand for electricity will only grow larger in the future. Oil is no longer king. Lady Electron now rules the day. How New York City modernizes its grid to meet the massive demands of the future will serve as a model for other cities to follow. Remember, it all started back in 1882 with one square mile in Manhattan. New York City has been an urban pioneer before, and it is of my opinion that it can do it again. See you next time.